Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to talk a bit about printing. Now, printing is a, a very foundational operation that we want to perform inside of our programs. So for example, we may be wanting to implement something like a logger, or we may just want to you know, print out some information from our application um, to better understand what it's doing, right? And you know, as we're learning how to program. Now, fortunately for us, we don't have to reinvent the wheel with printing, right? We can use some things that are built into um, our C++ standard library. So, you know, our C++ standard library includes, a, you know, a great many things that are very useful. So it includes things like data structures, algorithms that work with those data structures, but it also provides a means for doing things like input and output, right? And that's both input and output to the screen, as well as to things like files, right? So that's what we're going to go ahead and be looking at today. And perhaps more specifically, how we can go ahead and print things out to the screen using this thing called std cout. Cout just stands for character output. We want to print some characters out to the screen. Okay, so where do we go ahead and get started with something like this? Well, we'll of course going to need a C++ file. So let's go ahead and create a new file and we'll call it something like print.cpp. So if we go ahead and uh, you know, open this up, you know, the first thing we can put in here is just a main function. So, you know, recall from our last video, we know that our main function is really the heart of all of our C++ applications. That's where our programs begin execution, right? So after we generate an executable, um, you know, our program, you know, begins at main when we run our executable. Okay, so now that we have a main function, how do we use something like studcout? Well, before we could use something like studcout, we're going to need to include its definition. And this should make some, you know, intuitive sense here. You know, before we can use something, we're going to need to know what that thing is. So in order to do that, we need to include its definition inside of this file. And you can see here from CPP reference that it says that studcout is defined in this header IO stream, right? So we'll need to include that header inside of our uh, source file right here. So we'll go ahead and do that using this include directive, and then we'll include IO stream, right? IO just standing for input output, right? And we're including these stream objects. Okay, so what exactly is this include directive doing, right? What, what, what is its function? Now, you know, as I said in the last video, compilation actually has a couple of steps to it, right? So we have things like pre-processing, compilation, assembly, and linking. And the part that we care about, you know, specifically when it comes to headers is this thing called pre-processing and this executable called our preprocessor. Now this piece of software, right, it's the job of this piece of software to do things like find these header files that we want and paste them inside of a program, right? So here we're saying, we're telling our preprocessor, hey, I want you to find, you know, this file IO stream, and I want you to, you know, copy and paste its contents um, into this file, right? And replace this include statement right here. That way I have this definition of something like std cout inside of this file so I can use it inside of like my main function. And we can even see how this kind of works here, right? So we can go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and save this and minimize it. And we can invoke our compiler driver, G++ in this case, to stop after pre-processing, right? So we can just perform one of these steps of compilation. So here we'll run G++ with dash E to say stop after pre-processing. And then we'll pass our source file, print.cpp, and we'll call our output file something like print.ii, this intermediate file type. So we'll go ahead and run that. And you can see we generated this print.ii file. And we can go ahead and open it up. Right, print.ii. And inside of here, you can see that we're at the very bottom of this file. And we, we see our three line main function here, right? Int main, return zero, closing curly bracket. But we can see that our file is actually, you know, over 32,000 lines of code. So what exactly is going on here? What is everything else in here? Well, everything else in this file, you know, going all the way up to the top here, this is just the contents of this IO stream file that we included, right? Um, using that include, you know, you know, less than IO stream greater than, right? Or angle brackets, you know, IO stream. Um, this is just the contents of that file that we told our preprocessor that we want to include inside of our source file. So our preprocessor just found it and pasted it into our file. 
and you can see that above our main function right here, you can even see the thing that we were after, right? So you can see that we have this definition of this output stream object called C out, right? This is that std C out that we wanted to include the definition of inside of, um, you know, our print.cpp file, right? Because that definition is inside of our file, we can use C out because our compiler is going to have the right context. It's going to know what C out is. So we're going to be able to use it inside of our main function. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of here. So we'll just do Q and we'll get rid of this uh, print.ii and we'll open up uh, our CPP file again, right? Okay, so now that we've included this definition of IO stream, how exactly do we use IO stream? So to use IO stream, all we need to do is use that stream object, std C out, and then to print things, we'll use this double less than sign right here. And after that, we can say, put a string that we want to print. So something like the classic, hello world. And we'll do a new line character so it prints uh, a new line um, after this string. And that's all we really need to do to print out a string in C++. Now, one of the very confusing parts or potentially confusing parts about this is, you know, what exactly this less than less than sign is right here um, that's going along with std C out, right? How does this mean printing? So remember in the last video, when we talked a little bit about types, we said that with our types, we could implement operators, right? And those operators, we could give, you know, specific meaning and we could say what those operators do. And it just so happens that for our output stream object, like std C out, we use this double less than to do our printing, right? So we're printing out hello world here, just using this, you know, double less than operator. But we'll see how this double less than operator can mean different things when we work with different types, right? So, you know, when we're not working with something like a stream object, when we're just working with, say, an integer, and we're doing something like shifting. But in the context, you know, of right here, when we're using studc out, we use this double less than to print things out. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. And we can go ahead and compile this program and run it. So we'll do g++ on our print.cpp. And we'll call our output executable something like print. And you can see we have our executable here and we can go ahead and just run this, right? So we'll just do dot slash print and you can see it prints up to the screen. Hello world. So a little more exciting than our last program that just returned zero or returned 12. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and open up our program again. So one, one of the other things that we can do with C out is we can chain these uh, double less than operators to print multiple things. So for example, we could split up this hello world into multiple strings. So we'll go ahead and have, uh, you know, hello comma, and then we'll print out world kind of as a separate string here, right? So we can chain these operators together to print multiple things if we wanted to. So here we'll go ahead and quit out of here. And remember C++ is a compiled language. So we have to recompile our source code if we make a change to it and we want to see those effects. So we'll recompile print.cpp and we can run it. And you can see we get the same you know, string output, but we've split it up into two of those uh, less than less than operators. Another thing we can do is we can, of course, print other types as well. So, you know, I can just put something like, you know, I want to print the value one right here, you know, followed by a space and then world with a new line character afterwards. So here we'll go ahead and save this and we'll compile our program yet again and we'll go ahead and run it, right? And we see one space world and then you know a new line character so that everything goes to a new line after this prints out, right? So that's just some of the ways in which we can use this C out, this character output string object. Now, there's a lot more that we can talk about relating to these stream objects and how we do things like input or output to say files. And we'll also have to talk about exactly what this std colon colon really means. This gets into this thing called namespaces and this thing called a scope resolution operator. But we'll talk about that some more in some later videos. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. Below the video, you can find, you know, a link to this uh, CPP reference page on studc out. Um, you know, which even includes some examples of how to use it and some more information about these other stream objects. And of course, you can find this or any of the other code examples at my GitHub page at github.com slash coffee before arch. 
But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.